you start the game and you're basically given no introduction at all. There's no cutscene or anything. You start out in a hallway and you find your way out of the hallway into a building and out of the building into a yard and you're gradually finding your way out onto this island. And you don't know what the island is, you don't know why you're there or anything, and the course of playing the game is sort of unraveling a little bit of those ideas. Um, and uh, as you wander around the island, you find puzzles uh, that are placed around on little LCD screens, which at first uh, seems highly artificial and weird, but as the game progresses along, it becomes more clear why that is the case. Uh, and you solve those uh, puzzles and progress through the game. Um, it's a non-linear game, uh, so um, once you get out of the little introductory area, you can go anywhere on the island, actually, and solve any of the puzzles. Um, it's probably about 25 to 30 hours of single-player gameplay, so there's a lot of puzzles. Um, and every puzzle is unique. There's not really any repetition. You know, it's a very different kind of game. Something like an action game, for example, where you're fighting, like, repetition is good because you're in the flow of the thing. But in a puzzle game, repetition is boring because it's like, a, this is just a different variation of the same thing I already figured out. Why am I even doing this, right? So we worked very hard to make every puzzle unique and interesting. And each puzzle has its own idea that it sort of gives you as you, or that, that you need to come to realize to solve that puzzle. And this stream of ideas, as you go from one end of the game to the other, um, becomes a sort of very interesting non-verbal narrative. Or, nonverbal stream of communication um, that teaches you a sort of a puzzle language and in doing that uh, just provides a really interesting stream of ideas. You have to explore the world to get information to solve the puzzle sometimes, right? And sometimes, um, you know, the relationship between things in the world is, is important, for example. Um, the puzzles are not just arbitrary challenges, they're about ideas, right? And the ideas start out being relatively abstract ideas that are a little bit mathematical, but they eventually start to be ideas that are about, you know, space and time and the relationship of objects in space. And to talk about those things, you need a world, right? And so the, the world in The Witness is actually very important to the full experience of the puzzles. And to say more than that would be to totally spoil the game, so I can't do that. I originally thought the game was going to be much smaller than it is, right? When I started, one of the reasons why I said, oh, we'll be done in 2011, is because I thought it was an eight-hour game. You know, my previous game, Braid, was about four or five hours. So this was like almost twice as big as a previous game, which is a big jump. Uh, it's like a 25 to 30 hour game, actually. So it's, it's huge. And um, that didn't come because I was looking for stuff for us to fill the game with, right? It, it came the other way. It was like, we've got this small set of interesting ideas, but let's follow them and see where they go. And sometimes the opposite of things kind of being lousy and so you cut it is when you start following the ideas and they're so good that you have to put them in the game. As we stretch development of game, things change. And at some point I looked around and said, oh, the next generation consoles are gonna be out by the time this game is done. So we should be thinking about that, right? So had some conversations with different console parties and the people at Sony were by far the most interested in the game and the, the most receptive to the idea of having a game, uh, having independent games generally on their platform as, as a launch feature, right? So um, it was about a year ago, almost exactly, um, that we were invited to a developer event where they were disclosing the details of the hardware and and where you would sign up to get a dev kit and stuff. And, uh, you know, Sony invited us to that, which is not something that happened with us and anyone else, right? And so uh, from there, it just naturally rolled. Like, I was like, okay, we're very interested in this. Get us a dev kit as soon as we can get one. We're gonna we're gonna be on that console. So the, the plan is actually a PC and PS4 simultaneous launch. And then other platforms will roll along after that as we can handle it. So iPad, you know, we've got an iPad version kind of works. Uh, we're probably going to need to do some extra modeling because you, you need to do lower res assets and stuff for a lower res machine. And we, we probably don't want to delay the main game uh, by the process of building that. So we're going to we're going to launch on those two high-end platforms in 2014 sometime. Um, I don't know exactly when in 2014. I would say first half. Probably we might run a little past that if, you know, 
really the objective is to make the best game possible, right? And so we won't release it early if it's going to be not the very best that we can do. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting close.